Uh, hi, Ganesh. Yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah, Ganesh. So I have 10 years of IT experience and um, uh, mostly I worked on the ETL side, Abhini uh, Show. And from last three years, I'm working on the uh, Spark uh, converting. I mean, uh, whatever the Abhini Show code we are converting into uh, Spark and uh, running in AWS. So mostly I just worked on the uh, coding part, but I'm not, I, I don't know like uh, end to end uh, complete uh, picture like uh, <clears throat> how it will run in the uh, AWS and how to integrate on all. Uh, so in my company, they have uh, prepared the framework. So in that framework, we just uh, written the uh, converted uh, ETL code into a Spark. That's it. So I just want to explore more in the Spark. Okay. Yeah, uh, Rahul, I uh, uh, think we already done the introduction part. Uh, uh, you do you have anything, any questions, Rahul, before that, before uh, starting the session? Uh, we are not able to. Uh, sorry, Ganesh. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, come again. Yeah, do you have any questions before uh, starting the session? Oh, okay. Who is going to take this session? Uh, Mr. Himanshu. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. You can go ahead. So I hope you got the requirement right from uh, both the Baskar and Darahul. Uh, like <clears throat> Ganesh shared with me the document, right? Uh, the which contain yes the things which we need to go through. And <clears throat> Rahul mentioned that day that he wants to learn end to end so that he can clear the interview, right? Yes, from Rahul end and uh, Baskar now I uh, said right the requirement the same thing. Okay. So like I, I have been pretty busy lately. I didn't get much time to refresh my own much things. So I'll, uh, today maybe we can, uh, I can explain what I have done in my work till now in PySpark, right? So that you know from where I'm coming, right? And uh, like you said, right now you wanted to connect 20 minutes today to know about me, then maybe we can have full-fledged sessions on some particular time. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure. Uh, I'll just uh, give my intro a little bit, like what kind of work I have done till now. It okay. So you start with like I, so well, how good, well, how good you are in uh, Python, Himanshu? I am working on Python for last seven years. I'm pretty good in Python. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, initial two years, I worked as a like software development engineer. With, oh, I was using Python. And Fla we were using Flask as the backend for that, right? And we were developing a web-based ui so it was for a company which we, they were used to build bigger machines so to sell their machines showing each customer where, where their machines are and what are the details of their machines those, those kind of things so that was the web-based ui we built after two years then i joined one company where i worked as a data engineer mainly so that company actually scrapes data from multiple websites like amazon Flipkart and other things, right? So, like, they get massive amount of data. Like, daily, they million like they uh, scrape more than two bill two billion uh, URLs. Okay, that's the amount of uh, scraping they do on everyday basis, right? So, like, going through the data, creating reports on top of it, aggregating the data that needed something powerful, right? Which could process that much amount of data on daily basis. So, we were using PySpark there as the engine to convert the data into stats, into meaningful statistics, right? <clears throat> so from there, I started my PySpark journey, mainly because right? then uh, I worked there for like six, seven months. Then I moved on to another organization. There, uh, they were starting their own IT wing, right? So you guys are in like uh, US, right? So that is a US-based company. 
so they didn't have any india based campus so we were working as a contractor for them right so they started their idea so we developed their data engineering wing from scratch so me and my friend we were the two data engineers they hired initially so whatever so they started with pyspark only because they had huge amount of data right they are like they sell auto parts you know like car parts engine oil those kind of things so they had data but they couldn't do much about it because they didn't have the wing right they didn't have the resources to uh, compute them create models on top of it right then we so, joined in we started mm -hmm. so so you are clear about the scope of uh, my requirement right yes you mentioned you want to clear any pyspark interview right and you so want PySpark to learn and, and as well as python with respect to data yes python yes like data engineering you want to clear a data engineering interview until unless you know python you or i mean if they ask you pyspark questions they will ask you python questions it's like they they go in hand to hand so what's your like plan you start with python or you start with pyspark or like how we can uh, start with python like so what we'll do i'll uh, try to ask you guys few questions I'll, so that i can judge where you guys are in python right based on that we can speed up like uh, or or i can like just start from basic python things but that would take too much time right you might know a lot of things in python right so i'll just prepare a few topics these are topics we will go through you can tell me in which topic you have like what amount of knowledge right if you think few topics are you are good enough i'll just like ask you a few questions if you are able to answer them we can consider you are good at, at that, those topics and we can just briefly talk about those right so that if there is something missing there we can cover that as well right? and the topics which are yeah, like you uh, have like lesser knowledge you want to learn more on that we can go in detail on those topics right and slowly slowly like we can go for python like i think for a week we can work with python for a week or two then we can start with pyspark that's what i was thinking okay uh, you want to I believe you have seen the uh, the PDF. Yeah, PDF in that ML ops. Okay, ML ops is also there, like uh, on a high level. Uh, hmm. Do you have any idea about ML ops? No, I have not worked on ML ops yet. I just worked like little bit, not much. I won't say like I'm good with ML ops. Uh, like I can do like you said, right? You can do Python codes if some if something is given to you. Similar way, I can do ML ops if something is given to me. So I didn't go that side. I wanted to remain in data engineering field. <clears throat> but okay. do you want to know about ML ops as well? Yeah, just on a high level, uh, because it is also mentioned in the mm. PDF. So thought of, you know. Yeah, we can, I mean, by the time we reach there, I, I can just prepare it for myself and I can just explain you guys like basic, uh, that, I mean, the amount you need to know in ML ops, like basic things you should be able to do. That much we can do easily, yes. Mm. Right, uh, because in data, data engineering, uh, mainly ML ops is, I mean, wherever I have worked, only data scientists normally or, or data analysts use ML ops to build their models, right? Or anal or do some analysis. Be like, in, in, nowadays in companies, it's like the functional functions are not like separate, like data analysis people with data, Analyst will do only this. Data engineer will do only this. Like nowadays, everything is like everyone does everything. So yeah, you should know a few. Like if you're going to data engineering, they don't expect you to be full fledged uh, ML of engineer, but you should know a few things. If given to you, you should be able to do. Not complex, but simple things you should be easily able to do. Okay, regarding PySpark installation, I mm -hmm. believe you are. Uh, I mean, you have enough uh, knowledge or you have enough experience. Even if there is any Pi 4J exception, you know how to handle. Yes, I installed like, so it's been like two, three years since I installed any PySpark because in my machine, I have PySpark installed, installed. So wherever we work, like the admin team normally installs PySpark for us. So I did install PySpark in my machine. Nowadays, like it's pretty easy to install. Like they have made it pretty much uh, simpler to install. You because just I, it's also installed in my machine, but sometimes what will happen if you want to write the data into Avro format, um, mm -hmm. Pi4j error will come. So these kind you of things. Error, right? 
So there are like multiple ways when we uh, run PySpark, right? So you might have used Spark Submit, right? Or you might have directly used from the like uh, from Jupyter Notebook by set, passing setting the path and all, right? So if you will try, right? If you run it in in like suppose you are getting when you are running Jupyter Notebook, you get that error. You try to run a Spark Summit by directly going to the path of Spark Summit. You run it, it runs. So it's like uh, it's not able to sometimes find the path of Java, the jar file you have set, right? But uh, we can fix those things as well. Like we just have to set uh, right paths for Java and jar everything. So yeah, so, and like those how, things can how fixed good, here. How good you are in uh, in terms of Spark internals, uh, Spark, uh, you know, DAG, TOS. Okay, so you mean uh, creating uh, Spark bags and all, right? Task and executor, like how do we set how much memory to executor, how much to this and that, right? Yeah, yeah. For example, if number of partitions, if you keep, mm -hmm. for example, 15, so why mm -hmm. 15, why not 8? Uh, based on what you will decide, I believe uh, you are confident in those things as well. Yes, yes. We will, we will go through all those points, yes. Okay, so yeah. if there is any out of memory exception or uh, if there is any pipeline failure with yeah, this kind of failures out of memory, right? Uh, Mainly you get out of memory, yes, LTFS memory error. Yeah, yeah, you know how to handle, where to see, how to fix this, right? Yes. <clears throat> so like <clears throat> the 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 most of the errors, like you would you you can fix with caching the data, like. Most of the people, what they do, right? They perform a lot of actions, like in, in between. Instead of transform, they, they perform few transformation. Then there are some action, like they do count, they do collect in between, right? So those kind of things mainly uh, cause your, uh, like if you're right, if you're good at coding, then uh, the out of memory exception you will only get if you do some, if, if like the data data is very vast, right? And you, you don't have enough memory, then you have to make more partitions, right? Then in that scenario, you will have to like adjust your config. But if you're like, you don't have very high, big, very big data, but still you are getting out of memory. Except the the if you go and check your code, the most probabilistic problem would be you might be running a lot of actions in, in between your code. Like you would be doing count, you would be doing collect in between of the in between the five spark code. So if you have those kind of things, like count and all, right? Just because each action. Per, uh, runs the whole PySpark code again, like it does. It it's like a lazy trans, lazy, lazy uh coding thing, right? It is it does steps in lazy way. So suppose you are writing some transformation, right? You are adding a column, you are uh, uh subtracting one column into two. You are doing a lot of different kind of transformation, but when you run any action, like you do count on the data frame, like how many records are in the data frame at at some some point of time, then you again start doing some transformation, like adding a new column and based on uh, uh, existing two columns, you create a new column, something like you have revenue. You want to know how many people have, uh, like how many companies have more revenue than this amount, less than this amount, true, false, those kind of flag if you want to add, right? So if you keep adding actions between, between your code will throw exception uh, out of memory error because you will keep running it again and again and you will keep overflowing your uh, memory, right? So if you have those kind of things, just like cache the data. Suppose you are running a count, cache it, right? N running an action, just cache the data before it. When you have another action again, right? Clear the caching, cache it again. So that you have, to, until that amount, you don't have to process the whole thing again. This way your code runs like, it takes way much time because you are running same thing again and again. Like you are processing, you're reading the data again and again due to it being lazy transfer, lazy coding, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, we will go through all those concepts one by one. It's like uh because I I don't uh on daily basis like uh, remember these things, so I'll just uh go through these and we'll just uh work on them together. So you have like I I can prepare uh, data for you, but uh, do we have any solid uh, use cases? Okay, which I have worked on. Yes, yes. Okay. So um, because if you are coming for a session, means you need to have some data. Yes. 
or you Correct. need to prove yourself first then you know is yes. of your know, I, I have data like so initially we start with smaller data so um, then i'll i'll get mm -hmm. more like we can get data from uh, like online sources right so one of the uh, the i would say the biggest thing the biggest problem i solved was um, there was a data which was in text file dot txt file right it was coming from multiple sources so they were given we were given a pdf file as well to understand each row how it is like being how it is coming so it's like each row it might contain like thousand characters as well right so but the pdf which was given to us right it it was it it has all the details about that row right so index wise so from if the row starts with a1 they were like coding there if it starts with a2 if they if it starts with a3 until which index you might expect what values and from after that index what kind of code might start so that way we had to split that uh, row into multiple columns there were like uh, 300 columns th around 300 columns we had to split that single row so there were like millions of rows in that file so we had to create so you can consider like three you can say like 1 million rows into 300 columns so that like the data was becoming very huge like as we go down right so we had lesser memory that time so at that time we used udf because that was in PySpark, doing uh, split and all, it was like very tricky. So UDF, like it's Python. And UDF is like writing code in Python. So each row was being passed to Python. And it was like, we were like running all the substring over there and we were creating the columns and sending it back to the PySpark. So that was like the first problem I solved. So yeah, those kind of thing, we have like multiple scenarios which we can solve on PySpark. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. and how about uh, Spark streaming? Spark streaming, like you mean the the real time data, right? Yeah, yeah. How good you are in Spark streaming? You we only use Kafka there, right? Okay. When you use Kafka. Uh, okay, you know Kafka because this is also part of a cow. This part, uh, this yes, you yes that Kafka? is part. I am not full legend in Kafka. Can say that. Okay, I mean, like, uh, uh yeah, I understand, like, but at least you know how to set up Kafka and see, like, at least basic example. I'm not expecting you to be like, a, uh, yeah, that basic thing we can do, yes. So, like, uh, the company where we set. I mean, where we started the whole data engineering start from scratch, right? Mm -hmm. They had one Kafka, they like uh, they hired one Kafka engineer. So he created, he did all the uh, Kafka setup because we were using. So there's a company called Telium. So they send like real, real time data, real time events. So you have any website. So whatever events happen at that website, right? So they will be uh, logged into uh, this thing, Telium, right? So and whenever any event come it keeps it used to keep sending to us using kafka right so uh, we were handling it but that was a guy who was passing it to us but yeah we can like we can uh, definitely see the high level thing and we can set it up also i mean it's not it's not it's just set up right it's not hard so if we do it once we can do it like this, i just said nothing is hard the only thing which is hard is like the problem solving like if you get a problem how you solve it Installing stuff. Okay. In because I have experience in batch, whereas I don't have experience in uh, streaming. So my okay. primary goal to go with you is one of the main reasons is streaming as well. Because okay. this has streaming. I mean, uh, this, if you see the brochure. Uh, so, yeah, it does have stretching. It's streaming, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that is also another major reason, basically. Hmm. Okay. So if you are comfortable in Spark streaming, mm. then yeah, yeah, we can do it. Yeah, I have done it. So it's like I was not the full fledged person who did it, but yeah, I have done it the most part. But yeah, we can do it. I just need some time. Then like by the time we reach uh, streaming part, I would be ready to for it. Mm. Okay. Mm.
but how these things we do with, with web scraping huh how good you are in web scraping i can say i'm pretty good like i've done uh, um, almost all kind of scraping i have scraped like amazon flipkart paytm and like even like i have scraped complete agoda agoda you know agoda.com right so they yeah, had yeah. Like, they have website in different country so one of the project i was doing in my second company where i stayed, I stayed only 6 months uh, it was like hotel uh, scraping so they gave yeah. us uh, different countries i don't know the count now so they gave us countries and the cities right so they wanted us to uh, so each country have their own website right so they were like five websites and uh, like multiple multiple cities they gave us then they asked us to scrape all the hotels all the hotels from all five websites and then we had to compare the price of them like which site is offering how much uh, which site which site is offering uh, the like what's the uh, cost you have to pay for each hotel on each site in in one city right so that we can compare you know right there there are com- uh, companies like uh, agora.com they say that will give you the best price nothing will uh, you won't get anything cheaper than us anywhere right how how can they say it so they get data from these kind of companies so on daily basis we scrape data we send to them they get the report right then they update their price accordingly so if they know that these are the five competitors they have and they are giving a hotel for this price if they lower that by 100 rupees only they will have lesser price right so they those kind of things they do so yeah i did uh, scraping i did scraping a lot like 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 go ha ha the river go yeah 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 i mean those are those are easy to scrape the ones which are not easy where you have to use selenium right so like the websites which have data in the html right those are easy to scrape the website which have which gets data from json right which get data on run so when you run it right when you click something then the data comes up it it like it so few website are like you click it data comes it will stay there right so then you can fetch the html you will get all the uh, all the numbers from there but few website are you don't get the when you inspect it right when you see the page source you won't so whatever you are seeing on the screen you won't see on the page source right those are like json handled websites there you can't run like basic uh, request module right you you need to use selenium that's like automation tool in which you run it your chrome will open up right then you have to manual using your uh, selenium you need to enter username password like linkedin you cannot scrape linkedin directly right you need to have a selenium you need to use selenium which will open up chrome for you right and it will enter your username and password then you can scrape all the uh, connections you have right until unless that session is active you can do everything but yeah you that there you need automation yeah scraping is like i'm pretty good then we have pandas like if you don't have much bigger data then you can go with pandas as well that's like that is also a good tool that you might be aware of it <laughs> okay do you guys have a question yeah i have one question okay so morely i need right instead of uh, uh, pyspark uh, all these things i need like from dev to production uh, how to set up the project and how to promote and how to execute in the cluster uh how to execute in the i mean eks in aws uh how to integrate with a uh, aws uh to <coughs> snowflake and all so i need kind of uh, end to end one project by end of this session end of the course do you have the resources like uh, aws account and snowflake with you yeah yeah i can i can enroll i mean i can create a aws account Okay, that's all. Right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, you want to learn how on the setting up CI/CD pipelines and everything, right? Yeah. Actually, I am aware in all the areas, but uh, I need to connect all these dots, and I need to create a one project into it. Like. Hmm. Yeah, that's where uh, I'm struggling. 
so that project you want to create for your learning purpose or like for like interview purpose like when where you can showcase that i have done this this is my project this and that mm, either way like uh, so uh, pi spark and it should be integrated with uh, cicd and it should be run in the aws and mm. uh, process uh, through uh, glue and athena and can loading into snowflake so i need kind of this kind of project Uh, because more more or less all the companies using these are the services and these are the tools they are being used okay mm -hmm. for pi spark so i just want to um, create one production ready project for learning and same thing i can uh, use for my interviews also okay so mainly people how people create the pipelines right you might have heard about airflow right yes 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 so uh, what i have also seen like till now and what people do like well how the how this works right so suppose you want some data to be available in some bucket or some snowflake right so you create a pyspark code and you schedule it on airflow right mm. airflow is an orchestration tool right it's like orchestrate everything right mm. so it generates it if you want to like use git and all so you can use to update your pyspark code on airflow right mm -hmm. so if we have dags right right yes. and those dags uh, the 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 pipe the code which dag will use resides it can it resides on s3 right yeah you do it to uh, keep your s3 updated so suppose you want to change your pyspark code you make it you change the code in your git repo or publish it right so mm. the set you so that it pushes your code to s3 bucket and from s3 bucket dag will pick it up because it updates Because it mm. is like a live link there, right? And since Airflow is a orchestration tool, it schedule it has schedule available, right? So whenever your code is updated, as per its schedule, it will run. Now you can mm -hmm. do anything whatever you want in your Python code. Whether you want to pick uh, pick some file and like trim it down, create some stats, mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. uh, some other so some other S3 uh, bucket or through some Snowflake, which which that Snowflake. Mm -hmm. Mm. Or, uh, and also right uh, whenever we are creating a pipelines okay uh, let's suppose uh, we are ingesting data so because mm. uh, i work mostly in etl uh, world right so so uh, we will have a one generic uh, class that will be load i mean for that that will be used for a ingestion okay mm. so let's suppose i have a hundreds of files mm. uh, but i will use only one uh, uh, i will build only one class uh, such mm. a way that uh, uh, we used to configure all the parameters in a json channel and it will be executed uh, and it, it will be ingested into uh, s3 in separate uh, packets based mm. on the uh, partition that we have uh, set up and all okay uh, just yeah. like i have a hard stop at 9:30 I have a meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Rahul. Thanks, Master. Thanks, Ganesh. Bye, bye. Hello. Hello. Uh, he dropped it. Okay. Okay. Hello. Thanks, guys. Yeah. I think uh, he dropped. Uh... uh basakarul 